So you went on? Okay, the broadcast has stopped now, start, started now, sorry. I think the tick that you're talking about, Reg, was the tick to say that, you know, um, uh, it could be published live, but not the fact that it's recorded, because right? it, it means that also that anybody uh, can view this session if they're outside of this, anybody in the world. So uh, exactly. that's what you're probably ticking for. I'm asking you if it's okay to record it, and yes. we are recording it. Okay. Okay, and I can see I have a little thing that indicates me any viewers that we've got. We've got no extra viewers at this particular stage. Okay, so this session for anybody that's um, uh, watching the recording later on uh, or watches this later on is all about uh, online training on GIMP. Uh, and well, so um, and we've got two participants in the training. We've got Diane Hunter. Say hello, Diane. Hello. Hi. And we've also got Reg King. You want to say hello, Reg? Hello, everyone. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is the way I do this training, and Reg and Diane are familiar with it, so that anybody that's not is what we do is we do what's called a screen share. And um, I actually look at somebody's screen, either Diane or Reg's, and we'll probably use Diane's most of the time. And uh, then... Uh, we, I can explain what, what to do and how to go through the, the whole process. So, Diane, if you want to start off by sharing your screen, do you, do you remember how to do that? Okay, yeah. Diane's screen sharing now. I'm swapping the screen over so that we'll record Diane's screen. Okay. All right, and there we are. I can see myself on that screen. Okay. Okay, so to start off with, Diane, what we'll start off with is we, we can start off by going to um, a web page where I've got the training notes. Right? I've also already put that uh, down below where we are here. Uh, if anybody's uh, gone to the YouTube uh, recording, you'll see below this I've actually got a link to um, the GIMP website and also the my online uh, training uh, website. So. Um, about GIMP. So, Diane, if you just uh, go to your browser and open up, or at your browser, there, open up a new browser window. So, right up the top where it's, you've got a uh, GIMP online uh, training, yeah, I do that, okay. All right, uh, and that's a new tab, oh, okay. New tab, you were you expecting, okay. Well, I've never seen that one come up before. Keep changes, you can click on, click on keep changes, I don't know what that is all about. Okay. All right. And my website is Jeff. If you want to type that into the address bar right at the top and not in the search box, just type in Jeff. Dot Greg. In fact, it's the second entry down. You can see that jeff.greg.net.au. If you go down to uh, that one, yeah, it comes up with my website. Okay. And this is the website that I have all my training material on. Uh, so if you scroll down to the bottom of that, right at the bottom, okay, you'll see it says GIMP training, so click on that. I think you've already got it. Um, oh, no, you've got the email up over there. So there's some information on, on GIMP and what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to start off from the going from the known to the unknown. So ask the question, what do you know about image uh, processing programs or apps? Okay. Diane, what do you know about it? I've only done fast stone viewing. Okay, fast stone. So you've never used Microsoft Paint? No. Or no. the Paint program? You've no. used fast stone. So fast stone, you've only basically used for for pictures and stuff like that, and uh, looking at them. Okay. Yeah. Reg, yeah. Uh, you. I just need to explain that Reg has done the training with me already, but he wants to do this as a revision. So Reg has already done some GIMP training. So um, that's right, isn't it, Reg? That's correct. Uh, done two sessions. Okay, he did two, two or three sessions, I think we did, Reg, all together. Okay, so we're going right back to the beginning. So, all right, so the next thing is what is GIMP, right? So I've just written there, GIMP is an acronym from the GNU, which is, uh, uh, which is an acronym for the GNU Image Manipulation Program. G stands for GNU an image manipulation program, and GNU stands for GNU Unix. So in other words, GIMP was originally written for Unix, um, 
and then was made available on PCs and stuff like that, okay? So if you want to know more about that, you can go to a video that explains that, but I don't think we need to do that. So if you just want to scroll down a bit, Diane, and we'll go to the next section. What can you do with GIMP? Okay. Now I've got there almost anything. To get some idea, do a Google search on GIMP and show only images, and then do the same only videos. So if you want to open up a new tab again, Diane, so if you go up on top where you've got the new tab, click on there, and up where the top where it's got there, or down in the, the, the search box you can type, or anywhere, just type GIMP, G-I-M-P. Okay, press enter. I'll search. And you'll come up. The worst one, first one, it says GIMP, you know, fast install, easy to use. Uh, and that's got, by the way, that's not the original GIMP site, if you look at that. That says the um, that says www.ncs software photo pad. I don't know why it's got come up with that one because I don't think you're. It says powered by Google, but I don't think you're using a Google search there. Anyway, uh, the second, the third one down there, um, GIMP GNU image manipulation program is the real GIMP site. But anyway, I don't. I'm not interested in that. All I want to do is point out um, what you can do with GIMP. So if you go up to the top where it's got web and it's also got images, Diane, and click on that. No, images, a little bit lower. It's got web and then images to the right. No, up right up the top before the scrolling bit, just under where you originally typed GIMP. Image over, no, image over, to the, no, over to the left, over to the left, but right over to the left, up higher, a little bit higher, up higher, higher, higher. It says going news. No, it's got web, you've got images, and you've got news. I can see it. We'll go higher. Not on the page. No, it's all. I can see it on the screen. You've got web, image, and news. Go to where it says images. Move over your pointer up. No, it's to, over to the left. Okay, go up higher, higher than that. Higher. I'm, I'm up as far as you can go, Jeff. My line on the side here is up at the top. Yes, I know, but there's something written about. See where you've got GIMP, where you typed it in, in the search? Yes. In the box? Below, yes. Come down below that. So you've got web underneath that. Yep. And to the right of that, you've got images. That's it there. Okay. On that. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. And it hasn't done it. You've got something else going on your computer, so it's not doing that. Okay. Oh no, there, there. Are, oh, there's some images. Okay, but it's not the proper, not the proper Google images. If you look at all those images, there's an example of what people have done with him. So if someone's got a photo of a flower. They've done something. Someone's done some squiggly writing. Someone's put some stuff on and put a circle around it. If you scroll down, there's lots of things you can do with GIMP, right? Okay, heaps of stuff you can do with GIMP. If you want to know even more, if you click on. Uh, uh, videos where it's got images to the right, two to the right of that says videos, and there are some videos. And unfortunately, it hasn't told you on your one. Oh, there it is. One to the right of that it says one of ten of one million results. Whew. So there's roughly one million videos on GIMP. So if you want to know a lot about GIMP, you can go and do. Watch the videos on GIMP. In fact, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing a little bit later on. For example, look at that third one down. The third one there says GIMP tutorial smoke effects. Don't don't click on it, Diane. I don't want to click on it. But that's just something. If you wanted to do, have a, a, some one of the things you can do with GIMP is take a photo and make it look like a smoke effect, like it's shown in that one there. So there's lots of things you can do with GIMP. All right. If you want to go back to my tab where it's up to the top says GIMP Jeff, right up the top, click there. So uh, that's what you can do with GIMP. Now, ways of learning how to use GIMP. Now there's two broad methods I want to exp explain here. The first method is only learn what functions you want to do, right? The second method yeah. is to learn everything. So what I want to know from you two people, what do you think the pros and cons of that are? So what's the advantage of only learning the functions that you want to, that, that you want to do? 
Well, for me, I've got I've got limited brain storage. Okay. Can I just tell you now that you haven't? <laughs> You've got unlimited brain storage, and I used to think like you think that you've only got limited brain storage. Turns out you haven't. Turns out apparently you don't know me as well as I do. <laughs> well, apparently, well, I'm just telling you what the science people tell me: right. ways of increasing your brain storage capacity. Okay. Right? Okay, and yeah. the other thing is, regardless of that, even if you think there is a limit, you can learn a little bit to get something else so you'll leave some space to learn some more. <laughs> and when you forget something else, as long as you learn how to get back to what, well, why you do it, then there's a, that's another way. So anyway, so what you're saying is you only want to learn what you want to learn because you've only got a limited brain capacity, right? And that's not a problem anyway. If you think that way, it's not a problem. It's no worries. You can do it, do it that way. But the disadvantage of that is, I can tell you one of the disadvantages. Can you think of a disadvantage of that, Reg? Of only learning what you want to learn? Uh, well, you don't know the whole deal, really. Deal, really. You don't, sorry? You don't know everything. That's right. You don't know what you don't know. And one of the things that I've discovered in my only example, when I first started learning again, I started learning and I um, I uh, went and did a few. And then afterwards, I went and, you know, tried out a few other things and stuff like that. And I discovered there's a much, much easier ways of doing things than the way I did it. Yes. What I did that took me three or four hours, I could now do in three or four minutes. Yes. Simply because I didn't know there's an easier way. There's That's the disadvantage of not learning. Yeah. I, yeah, there's always an issue. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So you and can I, learn I, every... Go on. Yeah, there's going to be things in there that I don't know that are available that I would like. Yes, that's and you don't even know that you would like it. No, exactly. <laughs> All right, true. Okay, right on. Okay, uh, so the second thing is to learn everything. Now, I think that, you know, Virtually impossible, you know. You, you can't learn everything about everything. It's impossible. And even if you learn, even if you get a person, probably the people that wrote GIMP don't know everything about it because I, I, I used to write software and I didn't even know I'd forgotten things that I wrote about the software. <laughs> so even the person that writes it doesn't know everything. So, you know, it's, it's, it, you know so the, the, the advantage of learning everything is uh, it takes too long, uh, uh, and also it is impo virtually impossible to do anyway. Okay, but you learn as much as you can. But what you can do, what I find I'm doing because I've been doing this training, I found that I go through and have a look at the um, um, the uh, each of the, the menus and go through things. And then, what could I use that? What could I use that for? And then I go and do another thing. I look it up, and then I find oh. I could have done used that to do something else. Anyway, we'll talk about that later on. Okay, the learning material. Okay, so what learning material got? Well, first of all, we've got number one. Help as part of the GIMP program from the help menu. And also you can press F1 from any function. So to be able to do that, let's actually get going and get, get into GIMP. So if you've got GIMP on your computer, um, uh, Diane, I assume, Yes, I downloaded it, yes. Okay, so how do you get to it? I haven't yet. I've got to go over here to okay, the yeah. That's an honest answer, okay. do I? Yeah, it's good. There's no problem. And it's good. Probably other people watching this would have no idea. Now, when you say you down, did you download and install it? Yes. Okay, so if you've installed it, it'll be a program somewhere. Now, if you didn't know... if what would be the slow way of finding out where you've got it? Uh, well, Click on because I've got two computers and I, I did it a long time ago. This morning I got up my uh, program thing at the bottom here and checked out and, yes, there it was listed, GIMP. So I know okay. that I've got it. But I, but I didn't give myself a, um, you know, a icon. At least I don't know. I don't know on my desktop. I might have an icon. I don't know. Can I have a well, look? 
Yeah, we'll have a look on your desktop. Okay. Can you can you still? Oh, you can't see. I can still see it. Yeah, I can see your okay. desktop. Okay. I, so I'm having a quick look. I you don't. Have, can you you've see? You've got me? the icon down on the taskbar, third from the right. right. Third Is from it? the right. This one here. Yeah. That's it. No, I don't think so. No, no, no. that's something. Else. No, that's. Something else. Oh, it, it looked like it. It looked oh, like. No. No, no, no. It looked like it, but it's not. Okay. okay. And I've had a look at your desktop, and it's not on the desktop, Diane. Oh, I've had a quick look. No, 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 I have to go to my computer, do I? Okay. Where, where do you I go? Go to your computer. All right. So the, the, the way of always finding it on your computer, would, if it's in uh, all your programs, um, there you are. You've got an earlier version. of You've got down the bottom thing that says all apps. If you click on that, Come down lower, click on that, all right? And you, you, I don't know if you realise, but GIMP starts with, well, you do. <laughs> GIMP starts with G, so if you grab the slider and slide down until you're at the G. There yep. it is, GIMP 2. Can, can, okay. I, can I put a, can I pin it at the moment while we're doing it? Well, you can pin it onto the taskbar once you start it. You can, you can pin to start if you want. Yeah, if you want to. I, I put it on the taskbar now. Yes. Okay. It's no, that. you can't put it on the taskbar. Okay, so it's the start it, click on it. Okay, there'll be a delay. Now, when you start GIMP, especially for the first time, it takes quite a while. So we'll see We'll see what happens there. I can see it's appearing on the taskbar, but it hasn't appeared in, on yeah. the, okay. in the main area yet. Yeah. It's, still, it's still flashing there. Okay, okay here, here it is. It's GIMP 2.8. It's looking for data files. Most, by the way, for anybody who's watching this and just for your purpose too, when you start GIMP for the first time, it can take quite a while to get started because it's a, it's looking for data files, looking for fonts. It said this may take a while. It does take a while. Go through your whole computer looking for all your fonts because Jeff, GIMP is um, when, when I did the Fast Stone Viewer font. with Barry, I found one of the hardest things I found was getting the photograph that I wanted into the uh, program. That was I don't know how difficult this is going to be. No, not difficult at all. Well, you, 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 well it's, a, it's the same. There's, there's multiple ways of doing it, and the way to do it in this particular case, we, we will show you when we get to that stage, but basically all you do is do file open. Okay. That's the easiest one. And any program, most programs have got a file open. Another way of doing it is to open up your Explorer program or your Windows Explorer, look at for the file, and then quickly drag, click and drag it okay. down to the taskbar where you've got GIMP and doing that. I've so put we'll, one of, we'll, it'll take a while. I've put one or two photographs on my desktop. Here you go. Okay. Yeah, I can see them. Then. Yeah, just so that yeah. I, they're, they're ones that okay. I'd like to manipulate. Uh, just um, so I'm okay. not sure. I'm not sure. Here we go. We're loading. This is still loading. It's now loading the two options. Oh. It's loading the next bit, querying the plugins. That's the next bit. Uh, and so it's doing all that. Now, by the way, if you, you were to shut it down and start it up again the second time, even if you, you know, I think you'll find it will load a lot quicker. It's the first time that starts up that takes quite a while, unless you completely uninstall it and, un and reinstall it again, and that'll take the same amount of time. So well, anybody that's watching okay. think, I don't want to use GIMP, it's too slow to start. That's simply because it's the first time only start that takes a long oh, while. Oh, well, I would, have, I would have loaded it up if I'd known in advance. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, here we go. So it's still okay. flashing. Yeah. No, it's still flashing. You must have clicked somewhere else. So go back and click on. No, no, I haven't clicked anything. I haven't clicked anything. Click on the taskbar. You want me to click on here? Yeah, no. click on it on the taskbar. Yeah, it's brought it up. Okay. Okay, there we are. All right. Now, what? that's what GIMP looks like in. Right. One of the ways of utilising GIMP. Now, one of the problems we have with this, and Reg found this the other day when we we're training it, every time they wanted to stop GIMP, he had a look and he couldn't see the right hand. There, there actually are three windows open there. 
There's one on the left that says toolbox, two options. Yeah. There's yes. one in the middle. Yes. If you click the middle one, no, the middle one, the, what, no, not that one, one in the middle at the top, which got, you know, the, go to the, no, go to the middle one. No, right, right to the middle of the two, the two tool, but no, right into the middle of the screen. No, right to the, keep going to the to left, Diane, further to your left. Fur, no, to your left. Keep going further to your left. That's it. That's the middle one. That's a window. You've got to win that white area is all a window. That's another window. Oh, okay. There. Now go up to the middle of that and click on the middle bit of it. Uh, up where it says help. Click there. Don't click on help. No, don't click on help. Click on the white area to the right of help. Okay, click there. Okay. All right. Now click, hold that down and drag slightly downwards. Not going to work, I don't think. No. No, that's maximised. Okay. The reason being is the brushes, the, the one over on the right, that window on the right is in the way. So go to the one on the right that says layers brushes. Go up to the top of that. It's on the word layers. No, to the right, so you're on the word layers. Hold your mouse down and drag slightly down and to the right. Slightly down and to the right. Okay, that's it. To the left, sorry, my apologies. There you are. Let it go now. Let it go, let it go. No, let it, bring it down a little bit more. Let it go. You'll see now, you can see the whole window to the, uh, to the, to the, to the right, okay? Yeah. You can yeah. see the other window behind it. Now, this is a mistake that Reg was making last week, and every time he would shut down GIMP, he would close that window, and then the window behind it would be to close that one, in which case, when he started up again, that layers brush would disappear. And okay. that happens with a lot of people with GIMP. Okay. It doesn't happen. So you've I just to, want to... You've got to distinguish between this turning off and this turning off. That's that right. Now, yeah, so what I want to do is go to the one that's at the back there, the bigger one, and put to the pointer the uh, where the turning off one, put to the pointer to the, to the left of that, the icon to the left of that. No, the one to the left of that. No, not that one, the one in the middle. What does it say? You point at it. The middle one. You're on here. That one yeah, is one. To, to restore down, and this one is to minimise. Okay. So, go. Do you know what restore down means? No. Okay. Put it on restore down, and click. Right. What happened? Um, it's just come into the middle of my desktop screen in a small, a smaller yeah, view. Okay. Now that's one of the things I, do, I discover when I'm teaching people, I've taught Reg and um, Mari how to use GIMP, is a lot of people don't know how to manipulate windows. Now, they weren't aware that you could restore down. And as a consequence, GIMP starts in that default format and what they were doing, they were, they're closing GIMP, they were closing the brushes layer, that, that window on the right. So when they started GIMP again, that one on the right wasn't there. And we use that during the GIMP training. We will be yeah, using that window. Okay. All right. So what I'd like you to do is drag it up to the top of the screen. Drag that window there up towards the top. Okay. No, you didn't drag it up to the top. You made it larger. You, you understand the difference? Okay. Well, now, I, yeah. drag it to the top. You need to grab it at the top, not at the top line. That's it. Now you're dragging it to the top. Now grab the bottom right-hand corner and just make it a little bit bigger and come down so that it takes up. Practically the whole covers most of your desktop. Keep coming down, coming down. That'll do. That'll do. Good. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Now we've started the GIMP program. Okay. Now, as you can see, there are three windows. The important thing is that you're able to get back to these three windows, and I'm going to show you how to do that later on. Because the big problem I found that people with GIMP, and even myself, I have to tell you, they're in a situation where they lose one of these windows, and then they're completely lost. They lose the windows, or then they go. They go and look at some other um, uh, tutorial, a video tutorial, or something like that, and they go to do it. And their screen doesn't look anything like this screen, the one that the video is looking at. And they don't know how to do it. And by the way, it doesn't have to be laid out like this. That one that says toolbox options over on the left doesn't have to be on the left. You can move it over to the right. The one that says layer brushes doesn't have to be the right. You can move it to the left. 
And a lot of videos, they say in the videos, I'll click on the one to the left or the one to the right and people get completely confused because you can move them around. You understand that? Yes. Right? So when you're ever using something and I say to click on something to the left or the right, they're relative terms. They're relative to what is to the left or what is to the right. Exactly. In your particular case, your toolbox might be on the right and your brushes might be on the left. And this other thing might be in, in, over on the right or the left. They can be anywhere. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, so that's very, very important when we're using GIMP. But anyway, the reason we started all this is to go to the help. So if you go to the help, over to help and click on help, click on and you go down to help and you click on it, click there, it will says the GIMP manual is not installed on your computer. Click on read online. So it's better off to use the read online one because that way if they ever change it, it will come up. So that's going to go now and jump to your... Um, your browser and it'll load up and there it is there's the help all right okay so it's a GNU image manipulation program it started whatever your default browser is and it's come up with the help okay all right um, now with one good thing about GIMP compared to for example all Microsoft programs is that it does have a help you can actually find help on a lot of things. And in addition to that, it has what we call context sensitive help. So if you go now into GIMP, for example, and go up to, back to the GIMP there, up to the top there, the screen that's GIMP, GNU Manipulation Program, and go to, for example, uh, Image. Oh, no, better, better say, go to Tools. Go across to Tools. And click on that. Go down to Selection Tools. Now you're at Paint Tools, Selection Tool, and go over to where it says Rectangular Select. And notice when you're pointing at it, over to the right, to the right of that, it's up the little thing says Rectangular Selection Tool. Select a rectangular region, but it also says press F1 for more help. Now F1, you may not be aware of on your keyboard, is the help the the, the help key, the function key. F1 on your keyboard. So if you can find that, hold your finger over the F1 and press the F1 key on your keyboard. You can do that, Diane. Okay, there you are. It's opened up the help and it's gone directly to 2.2 rectangular selection. So the advantage that GIMP has that most programs do not have nowadays is that it has what we call context sensitive help. In other words, if you're in something and you want help, you can either press the F1 key for help or in some cases when you open up a dialog box, it will have a little block there that says help. If you click on help, it'll give you help on the thing that you are doing at that time. Now most software does not have that nowadays, unfortunately. In the old days, they all used to have it. Nowadays, People like Microsoft are more interested in updating their software and not giving anybody any help. They don't want to give people help. Okay? So you understand that concept? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to um, our browser again. My browser, if you click on the browser at the bottom of the screen, your browser, uh, the, the Chrome. No, no, don't. Leave that there. I noticed that, by the way, this is another thing I want to point out. Reg doing the training courses we do, and a lot of people in the training course say, oh, do I have to close it? No, you don't have to close things. You can leave all these things open. You've got plenty of memory in your computer. You can leave them all open. That way you can get back to them later on. Okay. I find that people okay. tend to close things all the time. And if they, you know, when you finish, if you've got lots of things open, it might slow your computer down. But unless you've got 50 or 60 of them open, no, they're not going to slow your computer down. So go down to, the, uh, down to your taskbar and click on Chrome. Okay, and go to where it says GIMP, Jeff, there, click there. So we're back to where our, our thing is. So, we, And also we've got GIMP down on the bottom right-hand side as well. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's learning material. Number one was help part of the thing. Number two, learning material for GIMP is a Google search. Now, I've written to the side of that. Don't worry about that now. I think I might have shown it to see some other people before. I've written a video of how to find things on um, Google. But I, I found when I did a GIMP, a search in GIMP, 
it returned 28 million results. So no matter what you want to find about GIMP, there's 28 million pieces of information about GIMP, the normal results. And in a video results, I found 1.5 million. Interesting, your one only showed 1 million, didn't it, Diane? Uh, I did not. Uh, I haven't clicked on it yet. No, no, but when we did it earlier and we showed, no, don't click on it. No, when I'm we not. did an earlier one and we talked about videos, it's your one showed a million. See, there's over a million videos on how to use GIMP. Now, you can also do a Google search on videos only. Now, the advantage of do, doing video, uh, video searches for GIMP is I found I read the manual on GIMP. I can even read web pages. And even myself, I can't understand what it's talking about because they use terminology I don't understand. For example, it talks about layers. It'll talk about channels. Uh, it'll talk about lots of things like that you probably don't understand. But when they actually show you how to do something, then you start to understand what it's all about. So videos are much better, I reckon, than just reading things. You can also ask a forum. Number five is there, a document, a documentation and tutorials on GIMP. GIMP actually has some tutorials. If you go back, we won't, but if you go back to that help thing, one of the things under the help of tutorials, it's written tutorials, not too good, but they're better than nothing. There's also a GIMP wiki, which is a small web a small web page that has various things. There's also frequently asked questions. You can also ask a person about GIMP. Now, the, what's the disadvantage of asking another person about GIMP? You think, Diane? You'd have to wait a while to be able to get them to um, acknowledge you and you know get online. Yeah, and the other thing is uh, the person may not be a very good teacher. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like me sometimes. Okay. Uh, you can also, by the way, you can go to GIMP on Facebook. Uh, GIMP has a uh, a Facebook site, uh, and also you can look at some terminology. So. What I've, I've done down there, you'll notice number 10 there, it says also terminology. As we come across words that people don't understand, what I try to do is put it in a, a section over at the bottom of that uh, terminology, all right? So um, so we'll hopefully explain some of the terminology we go down, as we go through. All right, the next thing is installing GIMP. All Both of you have got a GIMP installed, so that's not a problem. So if we scroll down a little bit more, Diane. Okay, installing GIMP. Okay, right up. Right, the GIMP user interface. So I've written there, do you know how to use Windows functions of maximize, minimize, uh, uh, restore down, resize, and Windows manipulation, uh, uh, and resize Windows multiple ways? Do you know how to do that, Diane? Um, probably not. Okay. All right. So let's go back to GIMP. Well, I know maximize and minimize, and you just showed us restoring down. But I, I thought that was, um, I thought that was, I thought that was minimize, and I thought that was maximize. I didn't know. I didn't realize it was restore down. But I'm not sure how to resize windows in multiple ways. Okay, all right, so we'll quickly do that, all right? If you go down to GIMP, where the GIMP thing is, down on your bottom of your taskbar, the little GIMP icon, click on him. Okay, you've got, by the way, notice just to confuse things now, <laughs> you can actually see GIMP there, and you can actually see my um, web page behind it. See that? Yeah, I thought it was a bit funny. <laughs> Okay. That's yeah. because we've got the three windows of GIMP up, right? Yeah. Uh, and we can manipulate the size of those windows. Yeah. And, but also yeah. the, GIMP, the main GIMP window, which is the main one, which is the one that says GNU emulate, Im, Image Manipulation Program, is yeah. there. And we, we, that is only partly covering the screen. So let's say we wanted to make it wider on the left-hand side. Move your pointer up and put it right on that. Left. That's right. You've got it right on the point. That's right. You can drag it across. So you realize you can drag it across by any edge. Any of the four edges. You can go to the top, the bottom, the left, the right. But also, do you realize you can do it from the, any of the four corners? 
Yes. You did know that? Yeah. Okay, so you grab it at that corner, it changes to a, 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 an angle, that's right. No, you're pulling that one across. That's right, you changed to that. Good, good. So that's how you manipulate it, okay? Now there will be times, I can tell you now, in GIMP, you'll have three or four photos open at the one time because you want to take something out of that photo and do something, and you want to take something out of another photo and do something, and do that. In which case, you'll have multiple windows on the screen. When the right. window is actually bigger, you also have scroll bars on, on it, meaning that you can scroll up and down. Now, for example, if you look at the a layers window on the right hand side there you've got there notice it's got a little scroll bar if you go over to that further over to the right more to the right there's that little scroll bar if you scroll move that up and ah no I've that's lost not it. the scroll bar for that it wasn't I've that was the one for my one it just looked like it was uh, okay yeah. so go and click on the uh, gimp thing again and click it up and it comes up there Okay, that isn't that one. That one didn't have one. That was the window behind it. Go to the one that says Toolbox Options. Yes. Okay. And you'll notice the bottom section of that's got a scroll bar. Go down to that and go to the right. Yes. Slide, yes. right there. Pull down on that. Notice that goes down further than what you can see. Now, quite often, because in GIMP you're working with multiple windows, and most of those windows quite often have multiple things on it, you, you will be, have situations where you won't be able to see everything. And quite often, but when people are doing things with um, GIMP or in any programs for that matter, they can't see what they, they, they can't see what's there, but they don't realize they can grab a scroll bar and do something. Okay. Okay, so that's enough about that manipulating windows. If you go back to the scroll bar at the bottom, go to the toolbar at the bottom and click on the uh, Chrome Thing and we'll go back to our uh, my web page. Okay, okay. All right. Oh. Okay. Click it again. That's it. Yeah. All right. All right. Learning material. That's all the learning material. You need to scroll down a little bit again because you scrolled up on that bar before. Okay. All right. It also says there are two ways of using the GIMP's user interface. Now you can have multiple windows mode. Okay, the fault, I when your group is first filled, and single windows mode. Now you can switch. Now we've got it in multiple windows mode, and that's the mode I use most of the time. To switch between the two different windows modes, you, uh, you, you do this by going to the windows menu and ticking and ticking by clicking on the single windows mode. So I'll show you how that is done, all right? So if you go back to GIMP again, okay, you're in multiple windows mode. Now I can see you're in multiple windows mode because there's a window on the left, there's one in the middle, and there's one on the right. If you go up to the, 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 the middle one that says Windows, that's the Windows menu. Click on that. Well, up here. Yeah, the one that says Windows. Uh, second from right, Dora. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. All right. And you'll notice um, it says the last thing on that one, it says single Windows mode. Go down to that and click on it. What happened? Oh, okay, I like that better. You like that better. Okay. Well, they give you a choice. You can use it that way or you can use it the other way, all right, depending on what you want to do. But if you want to change and you want to know how to change, go up to Windows again and notice it's got a tick on window, single Windows mode. Click on that. And it changes back to the multiple mode, all right? Okay. So if you... Okay, what, what, if you don't mind, I'll use the multiple mode for the moment, all right? Okay? Yeah. Right okay, okay. Uh, because that's the mode I use. If you don't, you don't, you can use either, either mode. It doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. Okay, then. 
Righto, so the next thing I want to, let's have, a, so that's the two modes that you can use it now that you know that there are two modes. And by the way, notice you've grabbed that, that the main window, and you've moved it across. Now you can't see the close box. You can't see the thing that's closed on that. So if you wanted to close it, you'd have to go back and click on it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see the close. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, like, go back like to my, that. okay, go back to my notes at the bottom uh, on the Chrome browser. Okay, okay. Um, classifications of tools is the thing I've written next. Now, what are tools? What is the tools menu? Why are they called tools? Because you use them to make something. So the reason they're called tools, and you quite often find this in a lot of programs, they have a thing called tools. So. Let's show you where the tools menu is and let's look at the classification of tools. Okay, so go back to your GIMP again. Oh, oh no, sorry, wrong one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Wrong one, you can just close it. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. Now, up the top, you notice under the menu, read out the what's the one fourth from the right? What's it say? You. You. No, fourth from the right. Fourth from the right. Tools. <laughs> I don't know. That's all right. Not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. When my when my wife when my wife teaches students and they don't know the right for it, and she says, "Go left." No, your other left. <laughs> <laughs> She's sarcastic though. <laughs> all right. So you have got tools there. Click on tools. Click on it. Now, notice what it says. It says, what's the first thing say? Selection tools. And the next one? Paint tools. And the next one? Transform tools. And the next one? Color. Tools. So you've got four different types of tools. So we've got all these tools, and there's four different types of them. Yeah, this, one, this one here is what I'm familiar with with um, Fastone Viewer. They do what? all of them in Fastones. Well, not all of them, levels, uh, but they do curves and, yeah. Okay. Well, I think you'll find Fastone has got nowhere near as many tools as what no. there are in GIMP. Yeah. All right? But you'll notice there's the tools, and that's how you get to the tools. Now, what I find is people say, oh, Click on this tool, click on that tool, click on the other tool, right? Well, at least let's look at the classifications of tools. What does select mean, selection mean? What do you think it means, Rich? Uh, um, uh, pick something. Yeah, pick something. When you're selecting something, you're picking something, okay? All right. And notice under selection tools, you've got a rectangle select, a lip select, a free select. That means you don't have to pay for that one. The other ones you've got to pay for. <laughs> uh, a foreground select, a fuzzy select, a bicolor select, and an intelligent scissors. Ah, oh, didn't know you had intelligent scissors, did you? <laughs> All right. Okay. So they're selection tools. Now, what do you think the paint tools mean? Choose a color. No, it's not choose a color. Okay. Uh, pencil, paintbrush, eraser, airbrush, ink, clone, da da da. Okay. Now, um, are you familiar with this terminology, Diane? Because you, you, you studied art some time ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, what a, you know what a pencil and a paintbrush is? Yeah. And an eraser, I assume. Yeah. What's an airbrush? Um, I've seen it done, and I've never done it myself. It's a little um, spraying, like a little sprayer. Yeah, a spray, uh, like a spray can type thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Now, some of the terminology are probably not for me. What about that last one? Give it dodge, dodge and burn. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not okay. familiar with that. Well, I'm not familiar with that terminology either, but I happen to be talking to a photographer friend of mine, and he told me what dodge and burn is. It's something they do in photography. Right? Apparently, 
a dodge is where in photography uh, what they I don't know if you know but when they print something in a photography they take go you know how they go from a negative to the paper yeah Are you aware of that you know how it's done Diane uh, with chemicals yeah but you know how they go get from the negative the image from the negative to the paper no not really Reg do you know no okay you know when you go you know you know like when we go to our training courses we have the projector there yes yeah and you know when you used to go to the drop you used to get you go to the movies and they have a projector yeah and you know you used to go to the drive-in and they have a projector and it was a big projector and jigged on the projector screen yeah what they do is they take the negative and they project light through it so that the image comes up on something but what it comes up onto is paper okay. and a special chemical treated paper yeah. that's sensitive to light so that what's on the negative gets burnt onto the paper okay the second part of that terminology comes from burn right now the dodge part is a real interesting part what's it mean to dodge the word dodge to hide to hide so when you dodge something, you're hiding something. So in photography, when they dodge something, they put something in front of, in front of the projector, usually their hand, so it hides the image from going onto the paper. Yeah. So that yeah. It, it's, it, and, and they move their hand over it for a certain amount of time, which means that part of the image is a lot lighter. So by doing that, by moving their hand over it, they dodge it, and doing it the opposite way with burning means it makes it darker. They leave it on there for longer. So okay. That's what dodge and burning are. So it's interesting that the terminology that they use has to do with photography. If you're a photographer, you'd know it. I wasn't a photographer. I never developed film, so I got no idea, but a, a friend of mine told me. It's interesting how it learns. But anyway, there's some of the tools. So, okay, we've got these tools. Now, that's only the tools menu. Over on the left-hand side, we have that other window. What's it say at the top of that window? Uh, selection. Uh, no, no. The window, oh. move away from these windows. Move the cursor away from it. Move the cursor away. Okay. And just click on the white area, any white area. So there's nothing selected. But over on the left-hand side, we've got our other window. We've got this main window. We've got other window. What's the heading on top of the window say? Toolbox. Toolbox. Okay. So that's your toolbox. So you've got your tools yeah. in yeah. on the menu. And if you point at that first tool down the bottom, underneath, no, not, not at the bottom one. Well, you've gone to the bottom one. The first one that looks like a, a, a rectangle. <laughs> point at that. One right up the top left-hand corner of the tools. Keep going, that one. And just leave the pointer there. What's it say? Rectangle, select rectangle, select rectangle. It's a region. So all that stuff that's in the tools menu, or not all of it, some of it has been put in the toolbox window. Oh, okay. Not all of it, some of it. Yeah. Not all of it, some of it, okay? So if you didn't know where a tool was, you, um, and I find... In, you know, when I watch videos or someone telling me how to do something, they say, oh, grab the brush tool or grab the rectangle select tool or grab the eraser or grab this or grab that. And just by looking at them, unless I put the pointer on them, I don't know what each one is. But if I go to the tools menu, they're classified there. If I go across to tools, you go back across to tools again now. Tools menu, sorry. Click there. Go down to selection tools. No, selection tools. And notice the first one, rectangle select, is exactly the same icon to the left of that that's over on in the toolbox. Can you see that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. So, therefore, what is the one that's the th on the toolbox, which is the, the third one on the right on the toolbox? Free select. 
reselect. Yeah, because you can look at it there and it tells you over there what it is. Okay. And also, uh, there's got intelligent scissors. It's got that there. They're the scissors one. It hasn't got an eyedropper there, notice. There's nothing for an eyedropper in those selection tools. See the one, the one on the third yeah. column down, the third row down? Yeah. It looks like an eyedropper? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, but what does that say? There's nothing about that. That's not a selection tool. Oh, okay. If you go down to where it says, on, on where you've got selection tools, go back, go to this you go down, notice the eyedropper, four, one, two, three, four, fifth one down. That says it's a colour picker. Therefore, yeah. it's not a selection tool. It's a colour picker, right? Not a selection right. tool. All right? Okay, anyway, so that's just how some of the tools work. All right. Okay, we've spent tw uh, 40 minutes just explaining the interface. But it's necessary to do that because if we don't do that, you don't know what all these things are, you 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 will, I can assure you, get completely confused as you go along. I'm not saying that you're going to remember all this, but the advantage is you can go back and watch this again and, and see what happens. All right. Okay. Right. So let's go back to our, um, uh, go back to my notes and see what we've got next. Okay. Classification of tools. So I've got the what are tools. What is the tools menu? We know both of that. Why are they called tools? Because they're used to make something, okay? How else can you access tools? And I've got there from the tools bar, or the tools menu, it should be there. Now, what is the difference between selection, paint, and transform tools? So we already know the selection tools makes us so we can grab something. The paint tool makes us so we can put something, paint at something. The transform tools we haven't even looked at. That means once you've got something, you can transform it to something else. In other words, you've already got something. Let's say you've got a, a, a circle of paint in the, in the middle of the screen. You can transform it to something else. Now, how could you find out? So you can see about learning. Or what you can do is you can simply go to the tools menu and try them all out. Okay. Now, one thing I, I want to mention now is that next heading I've got. How to restore the default toolbox windows in GIMP. Now, I've got that written there. We won't do that, but there will be a time when you find all of your menus disappear, all your, uh, these two, these um, uh, windows will disappear, in which case you need to go back to my notes there that says how to restore default toolbox when it tells you how to do it. You go to the edit menu, preferences, windows management, and click on the button to resets saved Windows positions default and then you click on OK but the important thing is you have to restart GIMP again. Okay, now I've also got a thing there that says why sometimes functions do not work for you. Now I'm not going to do that now because we need to be able to do something to see why functions don't work for us. Okay, now the next thing I've got is how to learn each tool in detail. Now I'm not, I'm not going to do that now because um, if we learn to do it in deep, we'll learn, we'll come back to that later on because if I, and we'll probably do it in another session, if I show you how to do it in detail now, right, I'll just lose you. You'll, you'll get bored with it, all right? You're probably getting bored already, are you, Diane? No, but I've got shocking backache. I have to warn you. I'm really battling. Oh. Okay. I'm all right, do you want to? I'm hanging in for another. It's 11 o'clock, at least another half an hour. Okay. So, all right. Okay. okay. All right. So let's go back to GIMP and we'll, we'll, we'll call up a photo and uh, we'll show you how you can do that in GIMP and we'll do a couple of simple things on it. Oh, shh. <laughs> that, that, that looks like the GIMP one. <laughs> Doesn't it? Okay. So I tell you what, if they look the same, you realise, by the way, I'll move just another it. thing. Yeah, you can actually grab it and drag it and move it over to another spot. Yeah, yeah, move it over to the left a little bit more. That's better. Okay, now you're not going to get it confused. Okay, all right. Okay, you mentioned before, how can we How can we get, you had, had trouble with, uh, with um, Firestone. How do you get your photos into it? 
Well, the way, how do you get something into any program? Copy and paste. Well, that's one way, yeah, that's one way. But how? But if you've done something, if you've gone to a, if you've used Word and you've written a document, and then you've saved it, I you, and then you I shut your that, computer down. <laughs> I do that a lot. I, I love Word. So how do you? What? Um, I I uh, highlight it in blue, go copy, bring up Word, and then go paste, and then I can print it or save it or whatever. <laughs> okay, well, you're doing it very much the slow way. Okay. <laughs> right. Have you ever done file open? No. Well, this Never. This, this here. Yeah. That, that's the Under, file. Go up to file. No, up to, no up on the on the GIMP menu. Go up to file. Yes. Yes. And click on it. Yes. And notice the third thing is open. Yes. Click that. It comes up with a special one for GIMP, open image. Right? And it gives a list of your folders on the left hand side. Yeah. Right? And I've got the photographs so um, I want to here on desktop. Okay, so click on desktop. Okay, and go to any one of the images. And by the way, um, there's with GIMP's a little bit different. If you do, you know which image you want? No, they're not. I can't <laughs> view them. You can't view them. Okay. If How do you I okay, that's a disadvantage of opening them within GIMP itself at this particular point. Okay, go to the one that says bird and pawpaw. I imagine it's a bird and a pawpaw. No, the one on the one that says bird and pawpaw. I don't click want there. to do that. I've done that a lot. Okay, we'll just click on it for the time being. Is it okay to open it? Okay. Oh, they're coming up over there. That's great. Yeah. Okay, you sort of preview over there. So if you go down to the next one that says image 0968. No, I don't. Click on that. that. You can see that one. Okay. Yeah, the, the, that's, that's very bad. How can you get, is it only going to come up one at a time? Can I put yeah. rest? Control and click all the ones and then open. You could, but I don't want to do that. All right, I, okay. I want to show you something else in a minute. Okay. okay. Just uh, we'll just open that one that you've got there. Just click on open. Okay. And there you are. It opens it. Okay. Right. Up. That's one way of opening files in GIMP. Okay. okay? Right. And and by the way, when I say file open like that. All programs that deal with files will have a file open dialog like that. Okay. All programs. That's right. Excel, um, Firestone, uh, Earth and View, um, Notepad, WordPad, all programs have a file open. If you've never used a file open, you, you, you haven't been using half the function, the main, one of the main functions you've got available in all programs. Okay. Okay, righto. Let's talk about another way of doing it. Go down to uh, your down to the taskbar, and you've got a file manager there. Go across to the file manager is a little yellow one there. Click on that, and your file manager opens. Okay, and then you can set it up so. Uh, to look at your photos. For example, if you scroll down on there somewhere, you've probably got under documents, you've got photos? I've got photos on the desktop. Um, yeah, I've got temporary folders. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay, have you got one, have you got a folder for photos? Mm, apparently not. Okay, it might be under documents. Click on documents. Documents. No, you haven't got photos. You got one for Firestone. No, I always have to go to this PC or something. I don't know why I haven't okay, got. Okay, click on. Okay, What's click on this PC then. 
No, go to this PC. Okay. There's your pictures. Pictures there. Click on pictures. Double click on it. And there's some, some pictures. So there's all, all, a lot of your pictures. Are. Okay. So let's say you want to take a picture from you had from Ireland. Notice you've got one over there on Ireland. It's a folder for Ireland. Top row, right. second from the row. Yeah. That's right. If you double click on that, it'll open it. Let's say you wanted to take one of those photos and you wanted to put it into GIMP. All right. Now, I'm going to exp this is another way of doing it. So we're not using the GIMP program to open the photo. Let's say you wanted that one on the right with the three the four, three people in it. All right. You can click. I'm going to tell you what to do and I'll get you to do it. You hold the left mouse button down and you drag the photo. Don't do it yet. But I want to don't do it yet. You drag the photo down to your GIMP icon on your taskbar. You do not let it go then. You do not let the button go. Then you drag it back up, right, into the GIMP window, and then you let the mouse go. So have a go at doing that. Drag it down. Good. Now come back up. Now let it go. Okay. Actually put it there, all right? Okay, it's actually put it there, believe it or not, but you can't see it because it's put it there as a special. I, I can see well, yeah, it. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, you can see it. But you'll notice What's this it's, funny put it over the that's... Top. it's put it over the top of the existing photo. Yeah. Okay, because we had an existing one there. Okay, righto. Now that's, and if you look over on the right hand side onto our, our layer, layers, dash brushes window, you'll see that there are two little photos there. And yes. one says PTC and the other yeah. one says image 209, etc. Right? Yeah. That's because yeah. that's the big advantage that GIMP has over other programs. And we're not going to talk, we're not going to do anything on this at the moment, but I'm just going to mention it. It's the big advantage it has over Earth and View and Firestone and all those other ones is you can have images in multiple layers. Okay. And in this particular okay. case, you've got two layers, right? You've got that image with the four people in it, and you've got another image underneath it, all right? Yeah. In fact, if you go and yeah. grab, uh, if you, you, well, you won't be able to do it, because you may think, put the, the pointer in the middle of the photo. It's just that, okay? Okay, and if you look, you'll notice underneath that pointer, You've got a little thing. A little thing looks like a pen. That's yes. because you've got the pen yes. tool, tool selected at the moment. Okay. If we want to use one of our tools, go up to the menu, and where it says tools, go to selection tools, and go to rectangular select, and click on that. Now come down into your photo, and you'll notice now your icon's changed. It's got a little plus in there. Yes. Mouse button down and drag over the image to the right and down. To the right and down. There we are. Let it go. That's it. You've now selected that part of that image. Okay. All right. Now, I don't, okay. I don't, I don't like that. Can I alter it? Yes, you can. Uh, what you did is you can alter it in multiple ways, okay? Okay. It, it, you, what you've done, if you put the thing, that thing in the middle, you notice your icon changes? Yes. And you're moving it. Yes. Let it go. Yeah. Let the icon, no, no, put it in the middle, in the, in the photo, let it go. Okay, click on that area, drag that on that area again, drag again to the right and down. Now let it go. You'll oh, notice. You'll notice this is completely different about the way you, you normally use what we call. I call this rubber banding. Some people call it marching ants, but basically it's a selection area. A they call it marching ants because you can see. Well, I call it cropping. Hmm? Crop. It's cropping. what? Cropping. No, 
No, you're not cropping. You're not. You're only selecting. Okay. There is another tool called cropping tools. Okay. You're only in the rectangular selection tool at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And you notice in that Lego selection tool, you've got four boxes. Yes. Go to the top left-hand box inside that selection tool. Notice it's the icon's changed? Yes. Click and drag. No, you didn't do it quite right. Okay. Okay, you didn't do it quite right. Okay. Go go again, put it in the, in, the, in the one that's in the bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. Now hold them. No, stay in the bottom right until the what, icon changes. What has to go in, the icon or the cross? There's an icon and there's a cross. Which one do you want to yeah, go the, into? The cross. Okay. Now you're in it. Okay. Now you notice the icon changes. Now hold it and notice you're stretching only the bottom right-hand corner of that yes. selection. Okay. Okay. Put it in the, to the, the right of that selection area. Put it to the right. No, no, don't click, don't, 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 no, don't click. Move up higher, up higher. Let it go, let the mouse go. Now, notice you're at the right point there. Okay, hold the mouse down and drag to the left. Notice what's happening? Cleared now it. drag back to the right of it. Yeah, I've more or less cleared it back to normal. Well, sort of. What I wanted you, you dragged it too far and you couldn't actually see what you needed to do. Why can't I, want I, to put, why can't I put that photograph over here on a spare bit of paper? Because here. that photograph is part of that uh, uh, that uh, uh, first image that we bought in. We bought it in as another layer, okay. not as another image. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's what's happened. If we had bought it in as another image, we could do that. We didn't. You bought it in because I asked you to click and drag it from the file manager, and when yeah. you bought it in, it added it to the existing image. Yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah. As a second layer, okay? Yeah. We'll talk more about layers later on. Okay. All right, okay. When we've been doing this... It didn't, um, give, me a, it didn't give me a choice where I wanted to layer it, though. It went smack bang in the middle. That's true. Excuse me a second, Mark. Just grab this one. No, it, it didn't. Uh, it just put it, well, it did actually it did give you a choice. If you went, had to let it go, you could have put it in another area. You could actually move it around there. But anyway, we won't worry about that at the moment, all right? Okay. If um, Click on the, the in the middle of that image again because we're still in the selection tool. Click there. Okay. All right. Now move to the right and down slightly. Now let go. Okay. So we've made that a selection area. What I want to do is show you some some other things. You, we're only using a minute part of the rectangular selection. You go over to the left-hand side where it's got the toolbox and click on the toolbox menu right up the top where it says heading toolbox. This one no, here? Not to, uh, no, no. Tool, that one, yeah, click there. Click there once. And take the right-hand side of it and make it a little bit wider. Grab the right-hand side of that menu and drag it out and make it a bit wider. That's it. Drag it a bit wider. No, it's got to change to those two. That's it. When it changes to the, the arrow pointing left and right, you can make it wider. But it won't stay. No, just move very slow. That's it. Now you've got it. Now drag it. Good. That's enough. Okay, let it go. All right. You'll notice... You're in toolbox and tool options. And under tool options on the, uh, the second part of the screen, it says tool options. It says rectangular select. It's got mode. It's then got anti isling It's got feathered edges, rounded edges, expand corner. It's got current. It's got position. It's got left and right. It's got grids. It's got shrink. It's got lots of different options. We're only using a minute part of it. And this is a tool. I just want to point that out. We're not going to go into them at the moment. We'll do that in another session completely. But you're only using a very, very small part of it. Okay. But on that toolbox on the left-hand side there, you'll notice you've got uh, underneath where you've got all the block, blocks of tools, you've got two, you've got, put the pointer on the, the black and the white area. Now, up a bit higher, that there. Just leave it there. Notice what it says. Foreground it and background color. 
foreground and background colors, the black and white square squares reset colors, the arrow swaps colors, click to open the color selection dialog. Okay, that's where you select colors. In most cases in GIMP, you can do it other ways. That's the easiest way to click at that. Okay, so the current foreground color, I think, is white. Yes. And the background color is black. Okay? Yes. All right. What I want you to do, we'll do now, is we'll use a tool to paint in the area that we selected on the photo. We're going to make it all white, I think. I'm not sure. So which one of those tools do you think would fill something with color? Of the ones above the pointer where you got it at the moment. Um, the, the paint one here. Uh, no, if you put it, and it says select, select by color tool. It's not that one. Try another one. Eraser. Eraser. Paint brush. Paint brush. Yeah, we can use paint brush, or in fact, we'll use paint brush. Click on the paint brush one. Okay. Notice when you clicked on it. You probably didn't notice, okay? Go back up to the rectangular select one and click on that. Notice it says tool options rectangular select. Now go back to the paintbrush one. And before you click on it, notice where it says tool options. Look at where it says tool options. Now click. Notice it changed. Yeah. Did you notice it changed? No. It, so the options for a paintbrush are different to the options of a rectangular select. Oh, Every okay. single tool has different options. Go back to rectangular select again and click on that. Notice it's got rectangular select. It says mode, feathered edges, etc. Go back to the paintbrush, click on that. Paintbrush, it's got mode, normal, opacity. They're all different. Yeah, yeah. Every tool has different options. Okay. Okay. Now you've got the paintbrush selected. Move over to your or your, fo your your photo there, the photo there. And notice when you're moving over, it's got a little icon that says there's a paintbrush there. Okay? Move yeah. down a little bit lower, and I want you to be to the left of that rectangle that's there, that's in the photo. So, no, to the left of that. Hold the paintbrush down, hold the mouse down, and drag to the right. Keep dragging. Drag right to the right. Keep, no dragging. Keep dragging. Keep dragging, keep dragging, keep dragging, keep dragging. Let go. Notice something that happened. Find from where you first started to where you ended? Yeah, yeah. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. It's it black. black. No, it's put black there, but it didn't do from where you started to where you ended. Bring over, bring over to the left so you're in the, that lady's coat, in the middle of her coat, in the middle of her chest. The one to the left there. Oh, we'll do that lady, okay. And this time we'll drag oh. downwards. Hold the, that one, oh, that one, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, it hasn't done anything this time. Okay, Don't you can drag, drag all you like outside that rectangle will do absolutely nothing. Oh, okay. Right? So you, you can okay. highlight the area that you want to work on. That's right. Now, this is the biggest thing that most people get confused with, with GIMP. They're under the impression... All I do is click on a tool and I can do something with the tool. No. You can only do something with the tool, A, on the layer that you're in, and B, in the selection that you've selected. Yes. All right? For example, if you go up to the top of this photo, the background where you've got that back, the, the other image outside the rectangle, go to the top of that. Now click and drag to the right. Nothing's happening, is it? You can no. squiggle around all you like. Nothing's going to happen, all right? You can even now go into the rectangle, but not in the rectangle inside the rectangle. Okay, go, no, not in that one. Go outside up where the lady's head's are. Now click and drag across there. What's no, happening? Nothing. Nothing. Now go inside the rectangle inside the area. Now click and drag. Ah, now it works. Yeah. Okay, understand? Yes, I do. If you can understand that concept, you have understood something that took me months to work out. Okay. All right? The only thing is you've got to remember it now. That when you do something on GIMP, you only work on the layer that you're working on. You're yes. only working on the rectangle yes. area that you worked on. Okay. Rightio. So 
the advantage is, unlike other programs where you can draw all over your image and make a mistake, in GIMP, you can select only the area they want to work on. So if we're working on the person's face, we'd only work on their face. So have we, got, have, we got an on, have we got an undo? Yes, you've got an undo. Not only have you got an undo, you've got multiple undos. If you go up to the menu, by the way, we've moved the toolbox menu over so it's covering half the menus on the left-hand side. So go up to the top there and click just on the blank area of the image. Click there. That's it. You can bring it across. All right. If you go to edit, and notice what does it say, first thing? Undo paintbrush. Now, look at that. Look at your image and click on it once. What happened? The last one I did went. Okay, click on it again and do it. No, it hasn't gone. Happened? No, it's not okay. going. Actually, it has. Believe it or not, it has. Because you painted in the areas outside that. And it's actually undone that one. Okay, believe it or not, there were more undoes, but you didn't realise you undo it. It looks like it's not undoing it, but it is undoing it. Okay. All right. And this is where people get confused because you actually did some drawing on areas that did actually nothing. But actually, it has recorded oh, the fact that you did that it's drawing. Undoing, it's undoing all of those. Okay. All right. But notice another thing. Click on edit. No, click on. Okay. Ah, there, now you got up to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now go to edit. Click yeah. on edit. And underneath undo, what does it say? Redo. Click it. And there we are. We undid, we, we redid the undo. <laughs> we've yeah. not only got an undo, we've got a redo. That's and by the way, point. there's a limit to how many you can undo as you can do, but you know, if you're doing simple things like this, it's virtually thousands, okay? All right. In actual fact, uh, over on that layers brush over further over, there's a, an actual thing that actually shows you all the undo functions. If you go over, um, if you go and draw, draw a couple more uh, lines on the rectangular area, do it again, Diane, draw some more lines. Yeah, do one there, do another one. Do another one. Do another one. Do, an, uh, do another one. That's it. Do one more. Yeah, good. Okay. Over on the right hand side, which says layers brushes. So the window on the right hand side, oh, it's got okay. layers brushes. That window. See the third icon in that is an arrow pointing to the left, a yellow arrow pointing to the left. Now up the yeah. top, higher. There. Leave the pointer there. What's it say? Undo history dialogue. Open the undo history dialogue. Click on it. There. There's all of the things, all the histories you've done. Right at the bottom that said you did a paintbrush, a paintbrush, a paintbrush, a paintbrush, a rectangular select, a rectangular select, and a rectangular select starting from the bottom up. And you can undo and do any of those. You've even done a layer drop, airbrush. They're all the things that you did. Not only does it keep a record of all the do, all the, that you do, not only does it allow you to undo, but it keeps a record of them, and you can undo any of those individual ones. So how do okay. you do that from here? Well, you just click on it, click on any one of them, and uh, and I think you delete it. I'm not sure. Yeah, rectangular select, and I think you can undo it. There's the you clicked on rectangular select, and there's that rectangular select that you did. Go down to the next one. There's another rectangular select you did. Go down to the next one. You've got to select none. Okay? They're all the things that you did. As you go through this, it shows you which of the things you did. So you can go back through all the things that you did, which I'm not aware of that you can do that in uh, Earth and View or Fastone or any most no. other programs. Oh, I am aware of there's some video, other image editing because, programs. Because, I, because I've got to go soon, Jeff. I'm, I'm nearly dying here. I just yeah. want to... Oh, what I wanted to point out was I've taken a picture of my desktop, which I presume is still on my desktop. Mm -hmm. so, because yep. I, did, but I, I didn't do a copy, so I'm not sure. Okay. 
Okay, the thing that you need to understand, just by the way, just by the way, if you go back to the little red arrow, yellow arrow, and click it again, switch off that menu. That yellow one, click that. That switches that off. Okay, and go now back to the one tree to the left of that, which is the layers one, and click on that one. No, up where it said brush, undo brushes. So, no, down three, four to the left. The, the one to the left most of that one. Keep coming across, coming across, keep coming across. No, to the left. Keep coming across to the left. Okay, click that one. That's it. You're back to, that's where you need. By the way, the reason I'm telling you to do this is in GIMP, if you do something and stuff like that and then you shut GIMP down, when you start it off, it goes back to the, it goes to the, what the last thing you did, it, it goes back to the, all the settings the last way you had it. Okay. okay. Right. Now, as far as you can, everything we've done in GIMP here, if we were to delete things, do stuff like that, it's not doing it to the original image. Okay. It's not. So with, in fact, with even, Bastone, you have to make a copy so that you don't, so that you have got the original. So you don't have to do no, that. With GIMP, you don't. You don't have to do that with GIMP because yeah. you're not working on the original. Okay. The only way you can do in fact, even if you went, if you click on now, go down to file, up to file, on the file menu. Yeah. Over to file. No, not, 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 not the file manager, on GIMP, in the file menu in GIMP. Oh, sorry. Close that menu. That menu. Go up to oh. file on the file menu. So always the left one. And you go down now to where it says save. Go down to save. Not save, that's save. Click there. It comes up with a dialogue. And you'll notice the default name now is img.2022.xcf. Now, XCF is an image, a, a, gimp, a GIMP internal image file, right? Yes. What that means is if you were to save it like that, you're not saving the image. You're at, and you're definitely not saving the original image. You are saving all the records of the work that you've done. Okay. All right? So it's going to do this. You're in Diane Arch. It's on desktop now. Click on Save. Go down to Save. And it's saved. Okay. Now, the advantage being is your original images are fully intact, both your images. But all the work that you've done on this image, the fact that you've got this image and the other image over, are all recorded. Okay. All right. And then if you ever, but, but of course, the disadvantage is if you want to then um, uh, use that image somewhere else, the only way people could use the, the uh, this file that you've created is to have GIMP. What you need to do, if you want it to get it back to an image that other people use, you don't save it, you export it. So you would go to File, Export, and then you'd say you want it as a JPEG file or a PNG file or whatever, okay? But then when you export it, uh, you could export it over the top of the original image. Of course, you wouldn't do that. You'd give it a different name. Yeah. All right? So that's yeah. one of the things, one of the advantages of GIMP. You don't have to worry about copying the file before you do it. You yeah. can make all the changes you like. You can yeah. close GIMP down, start it up again, recall yeah. up this again, do yeah. everything you need to do. Do you want to do that now? Do you want to shut this down and recall up what we've just done? Yes. How do I? Okay. All right. Okay. So you'll have to go to go over to close GIMP down where you've got your layer brushes over there. Gra grab the image. No, grab that image and pull it so to the right. There we are. You've got the X up the top there. Go up to the X and click on that. Okay, it's closed that image only, right? Yes. It's also got the default image there. Go up to that one and close that one as well. The reason it's you're closing two of them is because it always gives you a blank image. No, close it, the X one. No, close it, that's it. Yeah, Clip, GIMP is completely shut down. Yes. Okay, we're back to the thing. Okay, to start GIMP again, you've got GIMP on your toolbar because you pinned it to the toolbar. Start him again, start him up. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. sorry, my apologies. 
Okay, you didn't pin him to the toolbar. That's right. My apologies. I'm looking at your one. Okay, just go to your start menu and click on GIMP. And and, and, and click on. Uh, I did click put there. it. On, I did put it on the. Um, uh, where did it go? Apps. I did pin it to the toolbar because I moved it along. Do you remember? I don't know what's happened to it. Yeah, uh, no, you didn't put it to the toolbar. You put it to the uh, to the the. Um, Drag the toolbar down. Uh, the um, tiles down. I think you put it on a tile. Yeah, it's probably below this one. Doesn't matter. We'll put it. We'll pin it to the toolbar. So click on it now, anyway. It's starting up. You'll notice it'll, it'll take a while, but it'll be a lot quicker than last time. There. Much quicker than last time, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Rightio. Okay, then. Um, uh, you'll have to drag that slope to the right. Okay. All your menus are click on file. Open. Go down to open. And there you are. You'll notice you've got. Um, You've got image uh, underscore 2022x. Yeah, yeah and that you've got one. Image 2022jpg. The top one is the GIMP file. If you click on that and then open. Brilliant. There you are. Exactly where we sort of virtually where we left off the image over the top of the image, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you want to close this one. Go pull that over so you can close it again. Okay. Okay, move that menu over a little bit so we can see the left-hand side of it. Do file and open. Okay, this time, rather than doing uh, the XCF, the 2022 one, just scroll up to the top, Diane. Looks like it's... Oh, you're on your desktop? Okay. Um, what are you looking for? Rather another, than doing, oh, the, the one above, the one that's above the blue one, the original image. Click on that. Now click on open. There, there's the original image without the other image over the top of it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So even though we did a save, we didn't didn't it didn't save over the top of the original. You could save over the top of the original, but you wouldn't do it. Okay. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Would everyone agree? Yes, yeah. thanks, Jeff. Okay. All right, if anybody, so what we'll do, um, I'll just point out if anybody's watching this and they want to know more, we're going to do more sessions on GIMP. Um, I will, uh, 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 anybody that wants to be involved, um, I'll just quickly uh, I'll address, which is jeff.greg.net.au, oh, sorry, email.com. All right, I'll do a quick um, uh, screen. You can just come out of GIMP now if you want, want to, Diane. Okay. Okay. You don't have to. It'll ask if you want to save. Uh, say this card oh, changes I, because. You want me to go to file? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all right. Just, just we'll I'll close it. I'll close it. Close. Close. And you have to close that one as well. Okay. So you're back to where we started off. Okay, not a problem. It's back to me. What I'm going to do is share my screen and I'll quickly do a um, uh, type on my email address. Okay. Um, okay. Anybody's interested? Oh, doesn't, I don't, no, don't worry about it. If, any, if anyone wants to know my email address, go to the link below this and you go to my training notes and uh, somewhere will be my email address if anyone wants it. Okay, uh, I'll stop the recording now and uh, then come back to you too. Okay, so uh, anybody wants to know any more about me, uh, check me out. Okay, I'll stop the recording.